What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. I recently returned from the 2023 Collector Summit in Dallas, Texas, hosted by Fanalytics and on location at beautiful Heritage Auctions. There, I had an opportunity to sit down with Matt Nelson, president of CGC. Matt started collecting comic books at the age of 14, and by the mid-90s had been named the youngest ever Overstreet Advisor. Soon thereafter, he founded his comic book restoration company, Classics Incorporated. CGC purchased Classics Incorporated in 2013 and renamed it Classic Collectible Services, or CCS. CCS is the division of CGC that still exists today and cleans and presses comic books, provides comic book restoration, and restoration removal. After leading CCS for a few years, during which there was an overhaul of the restoration grading guidelines and, importantly for our channel, the introduction of the conserved grade, Matt became primary grader at CGC in 2016. It was from this experience that he authored the official CGC Guide to Grading Comics. He was named President of CGC in 2021 and continues to lead the company today. In his career, he's handled some of the most important and valuable comic books on the planet. We spent a few hours together picking each other's brains about comic book restoration, conservation, and the future of our hobby at the Collector Summit and he graciously agreed to allow me to film a little bit of the conversation for the channel. Enjoy the interview, and please forgive the audio quality. We were on a con floor. What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics. I'm here at the Collector Summit. We're, we're inside Heritage Auctions, Dallas, Texas, and I'm here with somebody who should need no introduction for this audience, Matt Nelson, thank Hi. you for taking some time. I appreciate it. Absolutely no problem. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be on here with you. So my viewers would love to hear about some of your background, some of the things that you've done, especially with how it, how it pertains to what we're focused on, which is conservation at the channel. And so if you could give us, give us a little bit of background on, we know you came from sort of restoration conservation originally. That's how you got into the field and into CGC. That's all been out there already. But if you could share with us, how did you get trained for that? How did you build a skill set for restoration and conservation? Were you formally trained somewhere? Was it something you studied under somebody? Or are you self-taught? And if so, what resources did you use? Yeah, I was actually trained by somebody. It was uh, Bill Cyril who's considered the father of restoration. Um, Bill had started restoring in the 70s, and of course at this point, the hobby was only a few years old, 10 or 15 years old, so sure. pretty early on. But uh, Bill had a, a chemistry background, uh -huh. um, and so he actually had studied uh, techniques of deacidification at the time, which have changed, um, but, you know, uh, but also got into uh, peace fill, color touch, and we're talking about very traditional restoration methods that were used in comics back in the 80s and 90s. Sure. And so, uh, so Bill had done some restoration, but didn't really stick around. He didn't do it as a, as a business per se, because he was off doing his other stuff. But uh, Susan, Susan Zaccone had chain, uh, trained under him in the early 80s. And so she kind of carried the torch uh, throughout that decade and into the 90s. And then by that point, and, Bill... And at that time, sorry for the interruption, but right. at that time it was mostly really restoration. Yeah. There wasn't Correct. really that much of a distinction, although a lot of the techniques are, are what we now call conservation. Yes, yeah. So at the time, what, what he was doing and ultimately what we were doing was the foundation of traditional comic book restoration. You yeah. know, what we all know, like color touch, peace fill, uh, sure. tear seals, reinforcement, things like that. Um, Traditional purple label stuff. Now, yeah. now it's been 20 years. Yeah. yeah. In fact, there was even way early in the day that were trimming was actually part of that for just a, yeah. a, a brief moment. But that yeah. that that left. And thank, so yeah, thank, thank God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so Bill was still around in the 90s, and Susan already had been doing it for years, and other people had joined the scene. Um, but Bill was actually giving classes or tutorials, like seminars. Uh, seminars, yeah. For for uh, I think I went up there for about a week in uh, oh, wow. 1996. And so, yeah, it was an opportunity that I was so glad that I, I was able to uh, to take advantage of. And so I went up there and spent a week with him in Boston. And he basically, we sat there for six or seven days and went through all of the steps of restoration, taught me all the different facets of it. 
and uh, and then I just went home and just started practicing. So he sent me home with a list of materials I should use, the techniques I should use, and where to buy all those things, and how to set my my lab up and and everything. And so it was just a matter then of trying to you know start to gain experience executing those techniques sure. with those materials. And so yeah, that was what I pretty much started doing in the late '90s into the 2000s, and then of course. CGC opened and then the other, fa you know, pressing came along and all those those other facets that I got into as well. Sure. But that, that's where the training came from. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. So it's almost like an apprenticeship. It was, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I didn't have the opportunity to work with him for months and years on end. Sure. You know, so, so to some degree I was kind of thrown out in the wild. But it was more about, you know, I had the techniques, or I'm sorry, I had the, you know, the, the, the processes were taught to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just the execution then that I had to... you gotta go practice. Yeah, yeah, I gotta refine it. How did Kenny Sanderson come into that? So Kenny was around, he was on the scene in the early 2000s. I think I met him through the boards. And uh, at the time, <laughs> yeah. there was a lot the, of... The yeah, old boards. The old boards, yeah. yeah. A lot of, so much has come over. The kids um, don't understand that anymore. Uh, oh, God, it's, it's crazy. So many stories on the boards. But, uh, but yeah, Kenny, and, and this is at the time when pressing was still um, controversial. There's still a lot of conversations going sure. on on the boards. And Kenny was was particularly vocal about it, but I remember that you know he he was approaching the argument from more of a uh, academic uh, perspective, which I appreciated because most of the other conversations at the time were you know more about uh, they, they they just weren't as it was more contentious, yeah. and you know and Kenny was just kind of like wanting to drill down on those on those aspects. So at the time, I was obviously getting more and more busy with pressing, and I was looking for somebody to take over the restoration into the business for. And, and the way that he was, we were talking, I'm like, you know, maybe this guy might be somebody that would be interested in working with me. Because he did have an art background and he had sure. some experience in, in general. And so I just point blank asked him if he'd like to get together and, and discuss it. He was blown away because I'm sure it was the last thing he thought I would ask him. And, uh, and so, yeah, we met up and, uh, and one thing led to another. And we started, uh, I started training him the same way that Bill was training me, uh, well, gosh, uh, what, 10, 10 years earlier. Yeah, but he was able years. to put that together with the, the art background and really kind of take it to another level. Right, yeah, because art, obviously, having that art background and having, you know, that attention to detail, almost those CD is, is critical. Sure. In addition to, obviously, the, the processes themselves. So right. uh, he had that. And so we started working on that. And it was interesting because I taught him what was taught to me by Bill, which was the traditional techniques. But quickly, as uh, we moved into leaf cast, mm -hmm. because it's something that I had my eye on for a few years. I'd known it was there, and wanted to incorporate that into comic book restoration. Sure. And at the, and but I, I was never had the, I didn't have the time to do it. And so here, finally, I've got Kenny, and I'm like Kenny, you know. So I taught you this. Let's try leaf cast. And so started. We built a, uh, a machine. We got it together. Yeah. We started. It was Table. very crude. Yeah. But it worked. Yeah. And so, and again, just like me, 10 years earlier, he started running with lead casting and, and trying to perfect that. And so that's where that... That's so I where think that, it's fair to say he has. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we've seen the work. It's incredible. Oh, yeah. He's come he's come so far with it. Gosh, it's been 15 years now. Yeah. And, um, and so that kind of is what dovetailed into the conservation label by CGC, which sure. I think is probably your... You're your... jumping ahead a little bit, right? <laughs> so then, yeah. then they acquired you. Yes. Yeah. And then you... you took on some new responsibilities at CGC. Mm -hmm. And then 2014 is the the new definition for restored and the conserved label drops, which I think is like a landmark event for us, really, because on the channel we talk about this, how comic books are born dying, right? Like this pulp paper, we know from the science, it's got a lifespan of between 150 and 250 years, depending on how it's been stored. And that's it. These are all these are all going to be dust unless we do something about it between now and that end of that lifespan, right? And so, for me, the the creation of the conserved label that allows us to get away from the stigma associated with restoration and allows us to just preserve these treasures was critical. And I want to give you credit for that. I mean, I know that happened under your leadership, but I also want to ask you about. What were, I'm sure there were so many decises that had to be made, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just guessing 
I'm sure I could have come up with a list of a dozen things and it was probably not even 10% of what you guys had to go through to figure out how are we going to redefine this and what is in, what is out, what's conserved, what's restoration. Right. If you could talk to us a little bit about the rationale behind creating that conserved label mm -hmm. and then maybe also some of the tougher questions that you had to answer, that some of the hurdles you had to overcome to sort that out. Maybe some of them that were value judgments could have gone either way, but in the end you decided this is how we're gonna do it. Yeah, that's yeah. an excellent, yeah, excellent question. And and it was it, it, it wasn't as much of a struggle as really just trying to take what we already had, which was the restoration scale and all the different things that fell mm -hmm. into those parameters, and deciding what of those we were going to carve out and set into that su that subset for yeah. conservation. The restoration scale got expanded at the same time as it well. Did. Exactly, yeah, so. which was totally different because, you know, obviously restoration was going in the same direction as grading 20, 30 years earlier. It was it was becoming more uh, complex and, and expansive. Nuanced. And nuanced, yeah. yes. And so we needed a, a scale that was going to represent that just like the comic grading scale yeah. had, you know, years before. And so we did that, but yeah, the conservation scale was primarily, we looked at it, I think I was looking at it like, if, if uh, you know, in the, in the regular world of conservation, like conserving old manuscripts and, and, and things mm -hmm. of historical uh, nature or of historical value, what do they do to them? You know, it's not, they, they, you know, these, they don't have grading scales, they don't have people paying, right. you know, uh, $100,000 for 9.4 and all that. So it's a bit of a different animal. But, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, as you said, you know, they're, they're degrading. They've already, they've already degraded. They need to be saved and preserved. Mm -hmm. And they weren't making them look brand new again. They were right. simply trying to get them back together to be handled. The primary to, to, distinction is preservation as opposed yeah. to how it presents. Right, yes. Yeah. Just, you, it's safe to hold, it's safe to store, display. It's yeah. not going to fall apart. It's not going to continue to degrade. And so that was the foundation of, of the things that we decided within the restoration to carve out to carve out and to make it into conservation and so at that point once we had kind of had that idea it was easy because you know it obviously it had to be professional so any amateur materials that would be uh like glue uh obviously trimming sure. um you know, anything like that was not going to be included right and, and then also aesthetic improvements which is primarily color touch yeah. Uh, we excluded that as well because that that's again you know, and, it, and it, it enables a lot of deception which is one thing that's a big reason I think why the purple label has such a, a discount to the market in the universal right because right. the potential for deception is so high um, and I think full disclosure is an important part of conservation very right. important part right? right exactly yeah so yeah so we pretty pretty much that left us with the the tear seals, the reinforcements, spine split seals, replace staples, which is big for rust, obviously. Yeah. And uh, and leaf casting, which had just come in a few years earlier, because you know that that uh, again, you know, gets the, uh, reestablishes the, the uh, integrity of the book sure. if it's falling apart. And then uh, cleaning, cleaning was was a tricky one because there is, you know, at the time, uh, you know, cleaning, uh, some people view cleaning as being an aesthetic improvement, you know, being able to like get, you know, uh, you know, whiten the cover, you know, to sure. make it look a little brighter. But, but at the same time, you know, cleaning, I recognize uh, in a conservative approach, also removed foreign things that were harmful in the books. Contaminants. Yeah, stains. other things that are going to accelerate aging. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, and things like that. So I felt that cleaning in a broad sense should be included in conservation. Yep. And I'm glad that we did because now, obviously, you know, we're seeing that evolve. That, uh -huh. that part of conservation is evolving as we speak. And so, it, you know, it, being part of the conserved category allows it to, to kind of, you know, establish itself and see, you know, what the future holds for that. And, and we will allow that in the conserved category. Yeah. So I'm glad we did that. I think logically it had to be. Like, but you came to the right decision. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. <laughs> it took plenty of, of conversation and maybe some arguments. And I'm sure you probably reached out to a lot of other professionals in the industry you, you respect. And so, yeah. yeah, try to get their I, thoughts. I think, on it. Um, you know, there's always going to be corner cases we can find to complain about. There's always going to be, you know, human error and other things to, to bitch about. But I just want to say, I think that you worked through it in the in the best way it could have been at, to start to put a flag in the sand, right? right? To establish something. So, so given that, can you speculate on the future? What what are the next frontiers we need to sort out? How is what's the future of conservation and and what things are we going to have to sort out uh, going forward from here? 
Yeah, I think, uh, well, uh, we've got obviously DI certification is one of them. I think that's a big one for me because that is ultimately what the comic books need to, to survive. Because right. you know, made of pulp paper, right. uh, wood pulp, and that's not going to last forever. Right. Um, and then also like the, you know, these other, these new techniques that are coming up like light bleaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's still being explored and, and I think a lot of people are still testing the boundaries of that as well. So sure. uh, this is the future. And so yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to keep an eye on that and, and see how it progresses. And obviously you've got you know, a fantastic information on it as well. So, thank you. I you know, I yeah, learned a lot just us talking. And so, uh, yeah, that. that's something we're going to keep an eye on and, and just see how things progress. But yeah. I think, uh, I think we're definitely going in the right direction because this is the future of collecting, I think, or the future of comic books, really. And so, you know, the collecting's already here, but, but we need to always worry about protecting the comics because they're going to be around yeah. and they should be around way longer than we will. That's, that's what the channel's all about. That's what our community's all about. That's what we're always working to preserve the books. It's always, it's almost like a physician who takes that Hippocratic oath, you know, first do no harm, right? Yes. Uh, I'm much more concerned about the preservation of the book than I am the aesthetics or even the numeric grade or the, or at the end of the day, even the, uh, the value. I mean, my hope is that the value of the book monetary would, would go with, would track with preservation. But if it was for whatever reason going the other way, that's not my primary concern, right? Yes. Yeah. And, um. I really appreciate you sitting down with me and, and chatting about this. One of my goals with the channel, with the work that I'm doing and with the Facebook group, Comic Book Conservation Community, is that we're trying to work together in a collaborative way to build a better knowledge base for comic book conservation, um, to preserve these treasures for the, I always say, the next couple centuries. So again, thank you so much for your time. I know you're super busy here. I know you're highly in demand. There's a line of people waiting for you. So <laughs> right thank here, you. Right? It was a pleasure yes, meeting you. you. Yeah, you thanks too. for taking time yeah, with us. No problem. And, uh, thanks a lot. Safe travels. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did my conversation with Matt. We got Matt's origin story, plus the origin story of CGC's conserved grade, and as clear a rationale as I've ever heard for what is in and what is out for the conserved grade. There is so much confusion in our community on the definition of restored versus conserved that I think this conversation was really important. Obviously, no company is perfect. They are managed and run by imperfect humans after all. But under Matt's guidance, CGC continues to set the standard in grading companies and lead the way in innovation. It's clear Matt and CGC are keeping an eye on where the hobby is headed regarding chemical and photo bleaching, and I'm sure eventually when they take a stand, it will be with the best interest of preserving the comic books in mind. I think the future is bright for comic book conservation and believe CGC will play a key role in helping us mature and grow as a community. I really want to thank Matt for graciously spending quite a bit of time with me at the Collector Summit and for agreeing to let me capture some of our conversation on video. A big thank you also to Fanalytics for a great show and Heritage Auctions for hosting. I'll put a link in the video description for CGC, as well as the Collector Summit and Heritage Auctions. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more great content if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another. Ooh.